Good morning, guys. It's time for MTV Bass School. All right, hold on. Before we go any further, um, there is a coupon code where you can get your very first box for $4.99. It's F-L-U-K-E, Fluke. Um, I'll leave it down in the description. This month, anybody who uses that coupon code to sign up for $1 will be donated to Special Ops Survivors. So um, go sign up. It's for a worthy cause. Um, that's all I got to say. All right, so next on the list is the Nichols Lure um, swim jig. Kind of excited about this. I've never done a swim jig video. But uh, it's got this, it comes with two toothpicks. And it's got a little hole right here in the, uh, in the keeper. So what I'm going to use as a trailer is I'm going to use a Fat Albert grub. And what I do is I make sure that the hook on that Fat Albert grub, grub goes the opposite way of the hook on, on the bait. So I'm going to rig it to where it goes just like this, if you can see. And that just gives you the maximum amount of action with that bait as it's swimming through the water. So I'm going to run it all the way down through there. Be real careful to hold it, put it really straight. And then here's what you do with the toothpick. You take that toothpick, you find, you stick it into the bait just like this. Let's see if I can get it to go. All right, you stick it into the bait just like this till you find that hole. All right, jam it in there really good and then break off that toothpick. And that thing ain't coming off. Pretty cool. You just need a lot of toothpicks. I used to carry a bunch of them in my, in my box, but. All right, so what I've got it rigged on is I've got it rigged on a seven foot three medium heavy jig rod, 20 pound test fluorocarbon line, um, an eight one to one gear ratio origin uh, C. Um, this is a great reel guys for only a hundred bucks anyway. That's my shameless plug. I've been totally impressed with it. And um, I'm just going to work these the, this timber. There's a lot of lay down timber you'll see here in the, in the rest of this video um, back here in the back of this creek. And I'm going to work it really good with that swim jig. I think it'll be absolutely the ticket. All right, so the swim jig. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flare out that skirt. I'm taking... Split it up just a little bit, slide my fingers down into the center, and then just push. Get that skirt to flare out like that. That way it protects that hook, and still if a fish bites, it'll collapse pretty good. All right, so now kind of look at the stuff that I'm fishing. I got all this cover, all these laydowns. Big hurricane, or a good hurricane, big tornado came through here just several years ago knock down a bunch of trees not so many on this bank as i've seen on other banks but still it is a uh, a whole lot of places for a bass to hide okay so what i'm doing with a swim jig is i'm fishing it just like i would a spinner bait or any other moving bait i'm doing a lot of moving the good thing about it is it comes through that cover so well you can see my rod tip. I'm popping my rod tip a lot. I'm trying to give it a lot of action. Changing, it's called changing directions. I want to get it to change directions a lot. Just went over a tree. I'll work it a little bit till I get to that tree, and I'm gonna pull it through. And look how easy it's supposed to come through that tree. Yeah, maybe not. All right. So the advantages of of using a swim jig over anything else. First of all, the bass have to be in a mood to chase. Um, and so if they're not, if they're in a funky mood like they are today, um, it may or may not be a good choice, but they've got to be in the mood uh, to chase a bait. So if they are, and if you're covering water and you're trying to catch as many fish as you can in an area, especially like right now, I'm in the back of a creek, um, lots of laydowns, lots of things like that. It's a perfect, perfect choice because it's snagless. <laughs> Uh, for the most part, it will get hung up in trees. It will get um, roll over a limb every once in a while and get stuck up underwater. But man, if you're if you're fishing, you know, submerged vegetation. Oh, that was a stick. If you're fishing submerged vegetation, if you're fishing laydowns, you're fishing just about anything. It's a good choice, and uh, and it can be fished fast. It can be fished slow. Steady retrieve. I like to do a lot of moving and shaking. A uh, lot of moving my rod, a lot of changing direction. 
um, hitting a lot of targets. Now you can swim any jig, okay? And um, guys were swimming jigs long before they came out with the specialized little swim jig heads and things like that. But now that they have these great jig heads that come through cover easy and, uh, oops, there is a tree, but uh, comes through cover really easy and, and, uh, and is streamlined and it runs straight every time. Uh, it, there's no point in just grabbing any old jig to me and, and swimming it. So your options for trailers are, are just, about, just about anything with a tail is what I like. Uh, paddle tail, uh, swim grub, double tail grub, uh, and, and you know, a creature bait, anything that's got a lot of kick. Um, if it's really cold, I don't want any kick. I'm gonna throw something that has no tail on it, like a, a fluke with a little split tail, you know, that doesn't have hardly any action. Um, you know, it just all depends, but it, most of the time I'm gonna throw it, it's gonna be warm weather, the, the, the fish are gonna be active, and I'm not gonna to worry too much about what trailer it is. I'm just gonna put one on there that makes it look like it's swimming, like a, a bait fish swimming, and I'm gonna go catch fish with it. Um, let me think, what else? Hook set. Now, a lot of times with a swim jig, I'm fishing it really, really shallow, and in these white ones, you can see from a mile away, and so a lot of times you see the bass take it. And the one thing that I'm really bad at is I'll see it and I'll set the hook immediately. Just like you don't want to do with a frog, you don't want to do it with a swim jig. And um, you, you give it a second. So you feel the bite, you, let, you lower your rod, you actually point the rod at the fish, and then you set the hook after about a second um, is where I've found is probably the best way to, to do it. You know, at least a second, second or two. But um, that's typically what I do is I will, uh, I'll point the rod and then set the hook. And really with a swim jig, there's no secrets as to how to fish it. Um, you know, uh, the biggest thing that I've found is just keep it moving, keep it changing direction. I, I Nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna just sit here and reel it back into the boat. I've found that you reel and pop it, reel it and pop it. You just keep working that rod just like that. And, uh, and you'll get you'll get a fish to follow and you'll get a fish to bite and just kind of pay attention to everything that's going on. Just reel it and just always have it changing direction, have it bouncing off of things, hit everything that you possibly can with it. You're not going to get hung very often. So you might as well take, take that risk and, and, and reap the rewards of taking that risk. But, uh, that's a swim jig. Like I said, not much to it. Uh, one of these days I'll make a really good, uh, very, very, very detailed video about it, but uh, it's not a bad little jig. It's got a good sharp hook too. All right, so the next one is the VNM J, yeah, the VNM J bug, and uh, I've got it on a Texas rig. This is a three eight ounce uh, tungsten weight pegged, a um, a three aught uh, mustad grip pin flipping hook and I'm gonna flip it into any kind of cover that come along in this bank. Should be really, really good, at least right, right way, way back here. I'm fishing for some local fish. Um, it's, I've got 65 pound test braid just cause that's what's on the rod. I would like to have 20 pound test fluorocarbon. I didn't bring another reel that had 20 pound test fluorocarbon on it, but um, this'll be just fine as long as I just am just flipping. If I'm, if I'm letting it sit for too long, the, in my head the bass get a, a good look at the line and it might scare them off, I don't know. But um, 811 gear ratio reel, fast, high speed, get it back in. Um, and then a um, seven foot three heavy action rod. So I can just get them out of the cover. So not a bad little setup. Uh, if I hook a big one, it shouldn't be a problem at all getting them out. So cool, kind of like that little thing. This next one is the, uh, the creature bait, the Texas rig. And you think to yourself, oh no, Gene is tied on yet another Texas rig in another MTB bass school. And uh, he's gonna tell us the same thing over and over again. So, and I kind of feel like I've been doing that because I love to fish soft plastics on Texas rigs. But uh, I think on this one, I'm gonna talk about the situation I'm in and the reason I'm where I'm at and why I think that I can catch fish where I'm at. Um, I'm on Lake Gunnersville. It is uh, middle of the day. It is, uh, Gunnersville is a fairly high pressured lake. High, we've got not only high pressured with fishing, we've got a high pressure system in right now. I just checked my, my um, barometer on my cell phone and it's through the roof. So we got high pressure, 
So I went looking for, instead of looking for those schooling fish that are out in the middle of the lake, I'm looking for what we call local fish. Fish that, ha are, that live way back in the back of a creek somewhere that just never go anywhere else. They stay here. They were born here. They, they live here. And um, they're very predictable sometimes. And so I came back here um, and the water temperature was cooler. It's considerably cooler, uh, five degrees cooler and a little bit dingier water so that's a little bit of a challenge it's a little bit clearer out on the on the main lake and there's not a whole lot of grass back here but there's a heck of a lot of laydowns and a lot of rock on the bank and things like that things that i can see things that i can throw to when the water gets dingy like this gets really dirty and it's probably eh, it's probably a foot and a half visibility so it's not super dirty but the bass tend to get a little bit closer to the cover and they don't go far from it and so I'm gonna work this bank and I'm gonna to talk to you about what I'm doing and it's more of a situational fishing type deal and that's why I love a Texas rig. When I say situational fishing, I say it all depends on what I come up to. The cover that I'm fishing dictates what I have in my hand and what I reach down and I grab. Um, and a Texas rib rig can be used for just about anything. And because I've got dingy water, because any, the muddier the better, um, the fish are going to move closer and closer to the cover. And it's going to cause me to want to pitch closer and closer to the cover and want to hit those exact targets that I can see. And so I'm going to throw a Texas rig every time. It don't matter. Or a jig. But uh, it's going to be every time I'm going to throw something in there. And it's going to have a lot of kick like this lure does. And it's going to, and that way the fish uh, can find it with their lateral line and find it with their eyeballs when it's a little bit clear. Pull up to a tree. I pitch right into the tree. Let it sink down. Feel for a bite. Hop it a couple of times, bring it back in. And I'm just working the area. Every little piece of cover, let me turn the camera this way. You guys, I don't know if you can see what I'm throwing to because it's a little under the water, but every little piece of cover might have a fish on it. How about that? And so I'm going to run the bank. This is not a keeper in Gunnersville, but it's a little one. Um, and I'm going to keep throwing to the any kind of little isolated cover and everything, anything like that. I mean, if you want to catch a fish on a Texas rig, this is how you do it. Just throw to cover, hop it a couple of times, feel for that bite. That fish just about ripped the rod out of my hand. Of course, a small fish will do that to you. Braid got dug in. And uh, throw it into that, into that cover and bounce it a few times and see what happens. Now, the reason I love it when I, when I can get away with fishing braid, if it's super clear water, I'm not going to throw, throw braid. But when it's dingy and stuff like that, I love being able to get away with braid because I can feel everything. I, f I know exactly when it hits the bottom. I know when I'm up against a tree and a log and a rock or whatever. You know, I know what's going on down there from years and years of doing this. But I also uh, don't miss very many bites. Of course, that one wasn't, wasn't hard to miss. But back to situational fishing, when you're, um, say I come up to a huge flat, I'm not going to throw this. Or I might swim it through there like I would a swim jig, but I might grab a spinner bait. I might grab uh, a swimming worm or something I can work through this big flat, this big area. But that's not a, what a Texas rig is for. A Texas rig is for hitting exact targets and working exact pieces of cover um, and not a whole vast area. If it's a big stump flat, I might throw a square bill. I might throw some type of a moving bait. If they're not in a, ch in a chasing mood, I'm going to throw a Carolina rig. I'm going to drag a jig. But a, a, a Texas rig that lays down on the bottom is good for dropping in on their head. And, uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to use it for. All right, so I'm pretty sure these fish are going to be on wood cover. So I'm going to hit the trolling motor. I'm going to stay on the trolling motor until I see a piece of wood cover. I don't even think I'm going to bother casting in between. And I see a piece of wood cover and I'm going to make three or four casts to it. Fish are not going to be deep. There ain't much deeper they can go in this creek. But anyway, they're not going to be deep. See a little log right here. I'm throwing up against the log. 
You gotta lay down over here, see us lay down. Lots of little, lots of log underwater. I, if their lay down is not in the water, I am not gonna pay much attention to it. It can be halfway in the water like that one over there. That one's really good because a fish will hide up underneath it. But uh, I just, it has to be something in the water for them to hide in. Uh oh, see like with this tree right here, right there where it goes in the water and where it's just above the, t the top is probably the best place. There's a little bit of it, one limb in the water over here. I don't think I'll catch anything on it, but it does stick out further than everybody else. But that root ball looks good. Look at this root ball right here. Lots of places for things to hide in there. And I don't care about catching a big fish. I just want to catch fish. Get that thing down in there, hop it a couple of times. Make it cast to the other side. A little bit further, Just pitch. Ooh, bad, 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 bad cast. I suck. Did you guys get it? That's uh, that's where this thing shines, and that's what I love to use it for. Cover water when the fish are shallow, hit targets, catch fish. Pretty awesome. This is the clutch from um, Catchco. The reason I'm excited about it is that I don't have a bait that quite do, does what this one does in the water. It it really kind of does a lot of hunting. It, it doesn't stay in line. Plus, it is a uh, it's narrow and streamlined, and I've been, I think the last, what, three times out here um, on Gunnersville, I've seen nothing but these little minnows about that long that are long and skinny. So, and they look like they're about this color. I haven't caught one to examine it, but I'm excited. Maybe I can catch something, two or three fish on this one. But uh, what I do, what I've got it rigged on, is I've got it rigged on a, um, a medium, um, moderate action rod and it is my square bill rod it's my um, any kind of a little medium to shallow running crankbait rod it's got 15 pound test fluorocarbon on it a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel just because I tend to fish uh, square bills and any small uh, crankbait a little bit fast um, I catch more fish uh, using them fast because I'm covering a lot of water and I don't really need a, a low gear ratio to crank those stinking um, uh, like you would a, a deep diving crankbait. And it's, uh, it's good to have a moderate action rod when throwing light uh, crankbaits mainly because it loads up in the on the back uh, swing and, and gives you a chance to give it a lot longer cast, a lot fewer backlashes. So that's why I go with a moderate action rod. Uh, should be a whole lot of fun. I'm excited about fishing this one. All right, the little hunch, 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 hunch minnow, whatever you call it. Oh, catch co bait. It's it's a crankbait. Um, it's a uh, very interesting crankbait. It's got a very small bill, which tells me it probably cannot be. Nope, probably cannot be reeled fast. Um, see how skinny the bill is. Almost like a jerkbait bill. And so it tells me that it's it's not gonna be one of those that you can just burn really, really, really fast. Nope, it rolls, immediately rolls up on its side. So, gonna have to fish it slow. I may not like that, at least not today. Not in a slow mood. It'll still catch fish, just not in that mood. And this is why it's important to have a moderate action rod. I mean, you, you've got to be able to cast it, you know, a good distance, but it's got to, it's, it's got to be accurate and you, you got to, you know, a limber rod or a moderate action rod will prevent you from getting uh, too many backlashes. Oops, I'm reeling it too fast. See what I mean? When I'm not thinking, I love to throw shallow running crankbaits fast. Whew. Or fishing fast. All right, so the cool thing about this type of crankbait that does a lot of hunting, a lot of it doesn't, you know, stay center line. It kicks a lot to the left and the right. Is uh, is that you don't have to be bumping into things. So if you're fishing a flat, this is a mud flat or a clay flat, whatever, sand. I don't care what it's made out of, but uh, it's it doesn't have anything to bump into except for the bottom, and the bottom might be too silty. So it's one of those crankbaits that when you're covering an area like this or you're covering up off the bottom and you can't bump the bottom or you can't run into things, it's perfect. 
because it does its own bumping it, it changes its own direction you know it's it's a it's a great bait just to throw in just about any situation i don't know how weedless it is i don't think it will be with that small bill or not weedless snagless so if i bring it through a a piece of cover like a, a treetop or something like that i don't know what will what will happen uh, we're going to try that out here in just a minute but oh there was a bite but it didn't keep it so it felt more like a bluegill and then let go but that's a good sign but that's what's there there what's where they have a, the biggest advantages i'm you know when you're not running in anything you're not changing any direction your options are either to start kicking your rod or changing direction speed with your reel well this one you just keep reeling and it does its own direction changing. So I've noticed most of these schools of bait fish are just paralleling the bank. That's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to the to where I think the bat area, where I can make a really good parallel cast where the fish are. And here comes another boat. I got a BFL this weekend, I guess, because there's a bunch of boats out on the main lake. The disadvantage to this cr crankbait or to a crankbait like this with a small bill is that you have to really be mindful of your speed. And so uh, there's pros and cons. It does catch fish though. Well, I don't think my fish are in a chasing mood. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm going to put this crankbait down. Too bad, man. I was looking forward to catching a fish on it. High pressure system will do that to them. Now, the last one I'm going to talk about. It's gonna be the, the cute looking frog. The Lunker Hunt popping frog. Cool. Let's talk about the Lunker Hunt frog. This thing is goofy looking. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's goofy looking, but it is. A um, uh, little concerned uh, with, the, with the hook placement, but I guess it's okay. Uh, I guess if a bat, bat squeezes all the way down, it'll be, I'll get good hook penetration. Um, I'm just so used to the other type anyway, but uh, I've got it on uh, my six foot five frog rod. It's a six five heavy, eight one to one gear ratio reel mainly. So if I make a bad cast and I've only got like a split second to get a perfect cast into an area, I want to be able to reel it in real fast, 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 and make a cast. Plus, it's also nice to be able to catch up with a fish really fast. Um, anyway, eight one to one gear ratio reel and a 65 pound test braided line so I can get them out of that thick cover so I can get those hooks penetrated and so um, I can muscle uh, a big fish in. So that's how I've got that rigged up. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see how this one works. It's cute. <laughs> All right, so when fishing top water, um, you know, bass are gonna hit top water when they're shallow and active. I'm getting a little bit clearer water back here, so I don't expect the bass to be shallow unless I'm throwing up into the shade. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Now, a hollow body frog, a topwater frog, is uh, known for heavy cover fishing. That's why you use a heavy action rod or heavy, heavy power rod. That's why you use a big heavy line, 65 pounds, 50, 65 pound braid. You know, it's just because of the cover that you're fishing. You get a big fish in there, you've got to be able to get them out. Uh, you don't want to lose a fish of a lifetime because you're dumb enough to put 30 pound line on, you know, just not big enough line. Don't ever think of it as, oh, the fish is only eight pounds. Why are you fishing 65? It has nothing to do with the size of the fish. It has everything to do with the crap you got to get them out of. So I just learned one thing. This thing does not like to skip. It totally came apart when I skipped it. So we won't be skipping it up underneath heavy cover. And we just got it hung in a tree. Let's see if it comes through the tree pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So I'm gonna have to make a little bit more careful cast and I can't skip it. This one also doesn't like to be worked fast because it will roll to the one to one side every time you pop it. You work it slow, you can get it to to walk. All right, we're back up in a little grass mat right here. Now, when a frog, when you're when you're fishing a topwater frog, I think about lily pads. I think about grass mats. Um, I think about heavy thick cover, but mainly grass and lily pads. Um, and when you're fishing 
that kind of stuff, uh, there's two teams, things that you're going to be mimicking. You're going to be mimicking one, a, a frog, two, a bluegill that has maybe got up on top of a, a grass mat and can't get back down in, so it's flopping around on the top, or a bluegill that's feeding on the lily pads. And so you're going to want to work it pretty slow. A lot of people tend to work them a little too fast. And so you throw out into this mat. Okay, so here's the grass mat I've got. Let me get up here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm just popping. You want to make as much noise as you can. And just keep popping it. Now, the difficult thing about fishing grass mats with a popping frog is that that bill will uh, will get hung up in the grass, and you'll start dragging grass with you. So sometimes you got to pop it really hard just to get it out of the grass. But that's with any popping frog through the grass, and you just pop. Let it pause, pop. When you get to a hole, you just let it sit there for a second or two and give the bass a chance, an easy chance to get to it through that hole rather than blowing up through the grass. See how slow I'm working it? Just like that. So a couple more times. They're not up in here. They're not here yet. Um, I'm not going to catch a fish out of this grass, but uh, kind of gives you an idea of how I work it through matted vegetation and through lily pads, just like that. And I'll let it pause. It already looks like a frog. I mean, there's no reason to try to pull it away from a fish because it might not think it looks like a frog. And you just kind of, as much noise as you possibly can make without, you know, blowing things up and you'll catch a fish. Now the key to the hook set, let me reel it in real quick. <clears throat> hook sets with a frog. The issue is you see the hook set. You get all excited. Yay, I got a bite. Boom, and you jerk it out of the fish's mouth before they have a chance to get back down below the grass and clamp down on it. Um, so what, what you do is you, you see the bite, okay? comes up, big explosion, boom, and you're like, give it to them, count one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and then set the hook. Don't just set the hook like a pansy. Set the hook hard. Try to rip that fish out of the grass on the hook set, and you will catch every single fish that bites a frog, okay? You've got to give them a chance to get it. So, well, I can't say every single fish because you will lose them and they will break your heart. But most of the time, that, your chances are a lot better then by hanging on to it, by sitting there waiting and then set the hook and set it hard. You are in a full combat situation when they bite it in thick cover. So set it, pull back, pull hard, keep reeling, muscle them out of the cover and get them big old beasts to the boat. So that's frog fishing. I love it. We're about three weeks away from really good frog fishing here on Gunnersville. I got the frog, the spro frog tournament next weekend. Got to figure out how to fish them, how to, how to catch them on our spro frog, even when they're not really on the frogs. Uh, should be a lot of fun. So, but that is the MTV Bass School. Those are the lures I'm going to do this week or this month. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, be sure to check out Mystery Tackle Box. Check out my Fishing Shirt of the Month Club um, and, uh, and subscribe to that. $10 a month, you get some really cool fishing shirts. And then, um, but sign up for Mystery Tackle Box. Use the, uh, the coupon code FLUKE, F-L-U-K-E. I'll actually put the whole link down in the description. And this month, a dollar of your uh, subscription fee goes to Special Ops Survivor. I, I can't thank them enough for doing that. Uh, you guys are awesome for signing up. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Um, but uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish. Have a great day. We'll see you.